You know that the last year, well, two years, we all of you know that it all started when I went on vacation, that that's where all of the grief started, that prior to that, everything was running smoothly. So we are going to let all of you know how much we are sorry for that. Although we anticipated that things were going to go a lot smoother, that did not happen. So we are coming to you letting you know that, again, we apologize for that. Um, it wasn't our intent to have things go that way. We are low, low, low on staff. So we put out a filler asking for anybody who wanted to apply to apply. We had six people apply within a short time span that we made available. And it was a short span, shorter than all the other times that we've put out our fillers. Of each of the six people, only one person, and that person will hear from me. Harriet, you will hear from me shortly, so I just want to let you know that. But only one person, one out of the six, when I say six people, we had to reject, uh, what is it, not six, uh, four more other offers from individuals to become part of SACOM. One person filled out the documentation and only gave us three pages of the four pages of the application. We were, uh, we were specific with the application. The application is specific. The application even says that failure to provide the information would automatically result. Now, you, you all don't know me. Because some of you say you know me. Some of you say, oh, man, I know exactly who you is. And, you know, some of you say that. But you don't understand. See, I'm now the CEO of SACCOM. So the same way you see me on video is the same way you're going to see me representing the organization for which I found it. I am not caring about your personal information. You guys should understand when it comes to privacy, I just got off the phone yesterday while traveling, <laughs> oh God, from Sacramento to here, which is a five-hour trip. It took us eight hours to get here. However, I just got off the phone with the county of this area that I'm in because they have been communicating with the post office regarding my address. And I told them, you don't have my permission to do that. This is private property. My address belongs to me. It doesn't belong to the county. That's why I haven't applied to you people for an address. My address is grandfathered from the original title to the property, from the original assessor's office. What most of you don't know, when an assessor assess your property, they give the property a temporary address. This is not a general address that can be applied to everybody on your block. This is a specific address to your property. Okay? They want you to have the address from the city because that gives them jurisdiction. That's why you have to apply or ask for permission. Permit shun. That's why you got to get a permit because somebody is permitting you to do something. That's why you have to submit. Got to submit to somebody. Bow down before me. You have to submit an application. I don't submit. I don't ask for permission. You know, this woman actually said to me, these are her words. Well, we don't permit you to do that. We don't permit you to live on your property in a trailer. We don't permit you her exact words, you to live on your property in a trailer. It's a fifth wheel, everyone. Now, how many of you people have been to trailer parks and see people in fifth wheels? Hold on now. I don't want you guys to jump ahead of me. Her exact words were, we do not permit you. Sorry. I told her, and without arguing or yelling or raising voices, I said, excuse me, I don't need your permission to live. I don't need your permission on where I live. I own the property. If I choose to live on a property I own, that's my choice to do with my property how I feel to do with my property. That's not your choice. You don't govern that. That's why I have not applied to you for assistance because I don't need your assistance to live. Are some of you, are you understanding what I'm saying? But this started off with me telling you 
about my privacy and about how much I appreciate that. See, when I went on vacation, the first thing people did was they decided that they wanted to make information about me public because they thought this information they were relying on was valid. They even put the so-called DA for the county actually did an article about me calling me a sovereign citizen. I am nobody's sovereign citizen. As I told you, my God is sovereign. He is the sovereign Lord of the entirety of existence. I have known this all of my life. So I will never be, ever be in competition with him. So because that person put out that article, because you read it in print, whew, man, that must be true. So these idiots who decided they wanted to perpetuate such information because they thought they were in a no. And then they go and they get some other information that they found someplace else and they want to rely on that. Look, everyone, I, I had a point in my life where I, I met up with some individuals and they told me they had some information about me. Now, these were individuals who had some authority. I said, really? You got some information about me? Yes, yes, yes. This is information that nobody else knows. Wait, 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 wait. You mean to tell me you have some secret information about me? And they said, yes. I said, well, first of all, let me make sure you understand something. There can never be any secret information about me that I don't know about because it's me. In other words, how can you know something about me that I don't know? Uh-uh, you don't have that right. This is concerning me. I am the controller of the information about me. Do you understand? Any information about me, I already know because it deals with me. It's my business. And so I don't want everybody in my business. My mother didn't like people in her business, and she always talked about not bringing her business out there in them streets. Let us sit up there and talk about what went on in our house <laughs> while we were growing up. And I promise you, oh, man, that uh, fire and brimstone, it, it would not have gone across. And my mother, bless her little heart, was a hugely nice woman. Everybody who knew her talked about how nice my mother was. My mother was a teacher assistant. All of my friends talked about how they loved them some Miss Branch, okay? But inside the house, there were certain rules that you did not break and it was reiterated and reiterated and reiterated. Even if we were to tell our father who didn't live with us certain things that went on in the house, we got chastised because she didn't want that business to be known. And so after a while, we understood what could be discussed and what couldn't be discussed. So yes, there's a lot of things that I would never talk about on video. Why? Because it ain't none of your business. It ain't nobody else's business. That's the family's business. Is it top secret? Is it anything? No, none of it is top secret. My family didn't do stuff like that. They don't have those type of secrets. But here's the thing. Even if they did, it would still be none of your business. Even if you did, it would be nobody else's business. Your social security numbers, your set packs, your 98 numbers, that's yours. That's not mine. I don't utilize that stuff. Okay, it's just not how it works. So let, let us let you know. We have talked to you all about tax credits, but you all thought that we were going to do the work for you. We've never promised that. We've talked to you all about including an arbitration clause in your agreement, but we never said we were going to take care of the arbitration in the past. So for the QPACs, it has an arbitration clause, but you, like all the other people ahead of you who applied and got their arbitration taken care of, you must do that. You must do the arbitration on those older contracts on your own. However, the new contracts, the pay attention, the new contracts, the arbitration is included as part of the package. Why? Because we cut out the overhead. Why? Because the Eon Foundation is handling things now. Yes, the Yale Foundation is an official foundation, has been since 2016. Just wasn't ready to put it into full effect. Now, to protect the interests of SACCOM and its subcontractors, and also to protect the interests of the Yale Foundation subcontracting arbitrators, it has to be under the Eon Foundation. Why? Because the Eon Foundation is the sole proprietorship. 
So if anybody wants to come after the Eon Foundation, bring it. You're a lawyer? You want to come my way? Bring it. Penny Mac is understanding more than enough for me. And I'm not even, I haven't even begun to make sure Penny Mac and those intelligent people who are sitting there working with Penny Mac, that they know who I am. Now, the purpose of this video, everyone, and yes, it is being done on the SATCOM monarchy. It will be on the SATCOM's YouTube channel shortly. But the purpose of this video is to highlight to those of you who have utilized the services of SATCOM and, and or its subsidiaries and or affiliates. We want you to know that we do feel for you. We know that the courts have not been treating you with the kindness that they're required to treat you with. We know that they have been making you go through hoops. We know that some of you have been receiving lawsuits being filed against you. Okay. We have had over 17 lawsuits filed against us. Nine of them we know about. So I know it's well over 20, but at least, and I said 17, but no, it's 17 of them we did not know about. They never notified us, never served documents upon us. And all I can tell you is that is amazing. And they got judgments. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you do if the court has entered a judgment against you and your period for filing an appeal has expired? What do you do? Well, let me help you out, ladies and gentlemen. You put in a motion for reconsideration. And you bring in all of the points in your motion for reconsideration that you want the court to consider. So every single fact that you brought up initially, you put in your motion for consideration, reconsideration. And the court has to consider each of those points and make a ruling. When he does, then you appeal his decision based upon his ruling, based upon your petition for reconsideration. If he doesn't cover all the points, then that's what you bring the appeal on. And that's how you get a case extended. That's how you get the appeal period extended. Go ahead. Let one single person who thinks they know the law tell me I'm wrong that you can't do this. Because there are going to be some idiots out there who think they know more than I do about what I'm talking about. You may know a little bit more about these particular stupid rules that they come up with, but you don't get to do that with procedures. By the way, I've been doing this for years. This exact same process that I'm telling you all about, and attorneys do the same thing and have been doing it for years. I didn't learn it from an attorney. You know where I learned it from, everyone? I learned it from never giving up. I learned it from never backing down. I learned it from, I don't know what no means. What do you mean, no? You don't get to tell me no. No, you better rethink how you're speaking to me. I actually had somebody tell me that what they weren't going to do, and they were a government official. And literally, I also had one person tell me he was not going to tell me who his supervisor was. I said, wait a minute. You're going to sit up here and tell me you're not going to tell me who your supervisor is, and I'm telling you I need to file a complaint against you? Well, you need to call this. I didn't ask you about a number, did I? I didn't ask you what your procedures are. See, what you don't realize is I already know that once I tell you that I need to have your supervisor's information so I can document this so that I can let them know on my own what's going on, you can't deny me that right. I don't need his full name, but I will need a name. Now, I just went to the department, the headquarters for the state of California. Got to talk to you guys about this just for a second. Went to the headquarters for the state of California's corporate office, DMV, yesterday. Was in Sacramento. Somebody donated a truck. Uh, Chevy Silverado. Free and clear. Say here. Paperwork. There you go. Bye-bye. Nah, she was very nice. She's She's been extremely helpful. And she said the car was given to her. And she doesn't use it. So she says, here, if you want it, you can have it. I said, you know what? I could use the truck where I am. It rains here. It does flood. And there's a lot of dirt and mud. The roads are dirt. So I could use a truck. This thing is four-wheel drive. I did not know it was four-wheel drive until yesterday. We drove this thing for, well, that car literally ran for almost nine hours straight, with the exception of about an hour. So, but yesterday, we put it to the, through the ringer. 
because we the individual who was driving because i i don't do the long distance driving anymore i could have but i just didn't do it okay the individual who was driving did me a favor came to my aid said yes i will help you i will go with you we went on uh amtrak we had to take a bus and a train so we went on amtrak we got there Turns out you all said, hey, we canceled your reservation. What do you mean you canceled our reservation? This is Friday. What do you mean you canceled our reservation? How are we going to get another? Do you know what we just can't? And had that conversation. It got to the point where it looked like nothing was going to work out yesterday. And I was just going to tell a person, don't worry about the vehicle. I, I will work on it. Something else will work out. And she says, no, here is the keys to my car. She gave me the keys to her Mercedes and says, you guys. Go ahead and go to the DMV and go try to take care of this the best way you know how, or go to the other U-Haul place and get the same information and do what you can. I said, but you got my car, y'all. I don't need it anytime soon. So y'all just go ahead and do what y'all need. We didn't go everywhere. We went to two places. Went to the main headquarters of the DMV, and then we went to the actual DMV location where they actually do applications and let you walk in. Now, I had already sent her in there to get what I needed was a one-day moving permit. And they told her no. Said, you're going to pay all the back registration. She says, well, I don't own any back registration. This vehicle hasn't even been on the road for 10 years. She's been starting it up. So literally, she was taking the vehicle, starting it up, and driving it on her property, and then stopping it and parking it, and doing that for 10 years. 10 years. The transmission, she had replaced just on a whim, six years ago. And the vehicle's just been sitting up with a brand new transmission for six years because she wasn't driving. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you guys a bit of advice, some information that you can use because I'm, I'm getting fed up. Now, I got to be careful as to the information that I give, especially when I'm using the SACCOM name. So Please understand these are the rules. I don't feel like going to a website right now, but you guys know my rule. So I want you to understand this phrase, M-O-T-O-R-V-E-C-H-I-E-L. Uh-oh, I did E-L. L-E-O-P-E-R-A-T-O-R. S L did I do I or did I do L L I C S E Now what I typed in was motor vehicles operators license. I want you all to pay attention to that phrase because many of you have been hanging on the issue of driver's license. You've been saying you're not a driver. There is nothing wrong with being a driver, which is why the Supreme Court has said anyone behind the, pay attention, anyone behind the wheel of that vehicle is an operator or driver of the vehicle, not an operator. They say driver. What's the difference between an operator and CDL license? Other people are aware that there is an operator's license that you receive. Motor vehicle crash operator's report. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. You are operating a motor vehicle. This is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. All of you have been operating an automobile, not driving. You've been operating. Okay? So how do you... Take care of that. Even with the federal government, pay attention. Motorcycles license. Now, this I think this is Arizona Department of Transportation. But even with the federal government, you are an operator. Operator. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you do? Okay. Watch this. I want N O N. Okay, I just added the word non to operator. I don't know what's going to come up because this is not the phrase that I was actually looking for to put in there. Now, you know, there's no such thing. Take a look. There is no such thing. That's why learner's permit is an operator's license. You're asking for a permit to be an operator. Okay, 
but you notice there is no such thing as a non-operating license. But yes, there is. I I I knew that it existed because I'd seen it before. You know what a non-operator's license is? A state-issued ID. It tells you right on there, this is not a driver's license. It tells you right on the state-issued ID. I've been telling you that I have not used a driver's license since 2008. That was the last time I applied for a driver's license. I have, every single time they have stopped me, showed them my state-issued ID. Why? Because I'm not an operator. I'm not traveling in commerce. But in order for you to operate in commerce, you must be licensed to operate in commerce. You must have applied to operate in commerce if you plan on making that a living. Now, residents of New Hampshire are required to have a valid New Hampshire driver's license to legally operate to legally operate to legally operate a vehicle in the state. So, you're paying registration. Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe that the DMV needs to have monies in order to operate, but they receive monies in taxes. So what are all these other fees? My vehicle, um, let me get rid of operators and let's do P-E-R-M-I-T. I promise you, if you pay attention, you will learn something. Been telling you all this for years. All of you know that I don't have a driver's license. Been yelling to you. Pay attention, everyone. This one says operate vehicles requiring commercial driver's license need a motor vehicle carry or motor carrier permit. Okay, in order to operate large commercial vehicles, they that is the legal term operate. So we don't want a commercial permit. So watch what we're doing here. Oh, I said operator. Uh, uh watch this. I O N non operations for a motor vehicle. You're not operating it on the highway. You're not traveling in commerce. Planned non operating filing. This is California. All of your states have it. File your stupid non operating permit with the DMV. There's some other paperwork that you have to file, but I can't give you that information. I can give you this information because I've known about this information. This information, this information. With a D or a T, with both. I've known about it. So I can give this to you. But the other information, I can't give you that. Because the person who said, this is what I've done, and they sent me copies, I told them that I would not share that information. But I cannot tell you all to do this. Okay? What I can tell you is that this is what people have been doing. Planned non-operating filing. I'm not planning on doing commerce. Okay? I'm not planning on doing commerce. So I'm not planning on having this vehicle. Wait, no, it had an exception. So before... Because I'm going to be filling out this for myself because I haven't done it for the second automobile. And I wasn't going to do it for the first, but I'm going to explain this to all of you. So we're going to do this as a mixed bag. Uh, I got to go forward. We're going to do this as a mixed bag. It says DMV will accept plan operating license, non-operating li uh, uh I should go back because that's the whole point of me going back. I've been doing too many things, ladies and gentlemen. Going at that car, I was up all day Thursday. We left Friday at 12 a.m., but we actually left before 12 a.m. We actually got on the Amtrak bus at 12 a.m., and we were up the entire day. Didn't get back until 11.30 last night, so it was more than 24 hours. And I, I really, when I keep telling people that I'm exhausted, trust me when I say I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted. The DMV will accept plan not operating filings up to 60 days before registration expires and up to 90 days after registration expires. Do you guys understand what they're saying? Plan non operating license, it says they will accept. Here's the problem. Take care of the paperwork. 
document the paperwork, file the paperwork. It's not whether or not they will accept. It's whether or not they have the right. Having have questions? If you need clarification on anything before beginning the plan, non-operators filing process, take a look at our reporting vehicle status fast fact. Okay. If at any time the vehicle is operated or parked where it may be subject to citation, pay attention to what they just said, or parked where it may be subject to citation. Okay. So just because it's a non-operating vehicle doesn't mean you get to park anywhere you want. It does not mean that. It just means that you're not traveling in commerce. See, California law requires vehicles to be currently registered if they are driven, towed, stored, parked on public roads or highways at any time during registration period. At any time, well, if it's a non-operating license, then it's not during the registration period. Pay attention to what they're saying. The registered owner decides to register the vehicle. Full registration new fees are due. The registered owner has moved and did not notify the department. He or she may not receive a vehicle registration renewal notice. And this is the registered owner's responsibility to pay the registration renewal fees. Plan not operating license is all the information right here. Ladies and gentlemen. And remember, this is a, a certificate, not a permit. This is a certificate that you're literally not operating in commerce. If the renewal notice is not available, complete the certificate of non-operation plan operation certi certification and mail it with your check. What check? I ain't got no check. Mine went out yesterday. Before I went to the office, I actually mailed it to them. Priority mail. I mailed it priority mail because I didn't have stamps to put on all that paperwork because they asked me to send them the originals and I sent them the originals and I made copies of the originals and I had an executive officer to send it to because I got that information. This is a simple certificate. You fill out the top, you fill out the bottom. This is your copy. Okay. And this one, again, this one is PDF. Matter of fact, I do need this. So let me go ahead because I have to do it, even though I did the other car, I gotta make sure. So I'm gonna send it to them again and again and again, and I'm gonna keep copies in the car. Because remember, the police only have jurisdiction over what issues? Anybody know? Over issues that they legally are required to operate. So they can get technical all they want. You have to know the law. So giving you that information now give me one second now i put permit no no let me put certificate so i'll put cert and that will be it ladies and gentlemen when i went to get the automobile yesterday the truck we drove all the way there, and this this is why you don't have to worry about the word automobile. And sometimes you guys will hear me say that on video that no, I'm not worried about using that word. Yes, I drive. You've heard me say things like that, but this is why I'm saying that. I don't feel I have to go into detail about everything. Some people think that I'm smart, they think I have a lot of information, they think that I know so much. That's not the case. I honestly only know what I know. And because I know something about things that you don't know, doesn't make me smarter than you doesn't make me more intelligent about anything. It makes me more knowledgeable about a certain fact than you are, but you have the very same right to have the very same access to the very same information by doing the research. Well, we go there and everything goes wrong. The DMV has already told the young lady that they're not giving her a permit until she pays all of those back fees. And they were trying to get $1,400 out of her. I said, well, no, let's go and just get a one-day moving permit. I'll take care of everything from there. They told her, no, not until she paid the fee. And she walked out of there angry and upset because of their stupidity. Ladies and gentlemen, my traveling up there yesterday was also in particular for me to go to the DMV and say, excuse me, I sent someone here. I sent the owner here to get this information. You guys didn't give it to her. 
This is what I told the person at the DMV after going and trying to speak to the executive who said that she didn't have time to talk to me, took down the number. I lost her number, so it wasn't a bad thing for me to show up there to try to speak to her. Now she has my number. Now I wait for her call this coming week. Now I can explain to her what the experience was. Do you know that the non-operating permit, uh, the one-day moving permit, excuse me, one-day moving permit, that thing was only $23, and that's all you need is just the $23. You don't need to pay any registration or anything in the state of California. So this is what I told the people at the DMV when they finally called me. It took me an hour. I waited in line for an hour. It turns out that because of my disability, I didn't have to wait in line. I get sh The DMV has a program to where when you show up there and you have a disability, all you do is go stand in that line. And they see you quicker than everybody else. Because I told the guy, said, not only have I been standing up for the last hour, but I've been up for more than a day. And you people have me waiting out there. And then you have a sign and your staff sees me here with this stupid cane. And they, you have a sign right there that says disability. And, and I didn't raise my voice. I'm raising my voice now, but I didn't raise my voice. And you have a sign that says individuals with disability stand here. And none of your staff said a word to me. And the guy said, he's the supervisor. He says, what can I do for you, sir? I said, well, first of all, I sent the owner here to get a simple one-day moving permit. And your staff said they weren't going to give it to her. I sent the owner. He says, do you have any paperwork for the vehicle? I said, no, we've already presented that to you guys. And I just mailed it off to your central office, whom I just came from. And they have let me know that you don't have any such policy that fees need to be paid. He says, sir, what do you want from me? I said, I just need the moving permit. He says, okay. He walked away, went over to one of the staff members. He says, after he pays the filing, I mean the $23, could you get him a moving permit? She says, sure. I gave her $23, debit card, and she gave me a moving permit. It literally was that quick. The supervisor, I really wanted to give him a piece of my mind, but he was one of those, I've been here for 150 years. I don't look like it, but trust me, I've been here for 150 years, and I ain't got time for conversation. You tell me what you want. If we can do it, it'll get done. But if you get an attitude with me, I'm going to drag my feet. That's the attitude he had. And that attitude, I didn't care, because like I told him, I was already going to bring it back to the main office. Somebody was going to get my attention, and I was going to get their attention and he gave me what i needed and so we drove this chevy um uh, this extended cab silverado back to the home that is parked outside it will i promise you it will come in handy on, on <laughs> in more ways than one and it's parked right outside and it will do what i need it to do and i'm grateful to the young lady for providing it for me so by bringing up that subject, it segues into the secondary reason for this video for the members of the SAT PAC. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you have done the arbitration process. Many of you have sent out your contracts and you've not gotten any responses. So what we're going to do is we're going to put together a FOIA. That's right. We're going to put together a simple general FOIA template. And we're going to take that general FOIA template and we're gonna give it to you. We're gonna put it up on the site. You're gonna have that FOIA template. Then we're gonna to put together an affidavit template. And it literally is gonna be an outline. Who, what, when, where, how, and what is it we are seeking? That will be the final question, which is why we're doing this. So who, what, when, where, why, and how. That's how you're gonna do your complaint. Then we're going to add some case law. You don't need to add more case law to this. This is a simple complaint. Do not sit up and add all that junk because it ain't necessary. This is the complaint. This is not the dissertation. This is not the manifesto. This is a simple complaint so that when they get it, they'll see these are the individual's issues. They're raising these claims. They have these rights. They're saying these rights were violated. We're going to put together a document like that for you. 
then we're going to give you suggested addresses to send these documents. We'll even do that for the um, fact that we're asking people to send the private law FOIA requests to the several different agencies, the Speaker of the House, the Speaker of the Senate, and or the Chairman of the Senate, whoever, whatever these idiots are called, the Judiciary Committee for the Senate, then you're going to send a copy to Rand Paul, who was the sponsor of the bill. And you're going to do a FOIA request for a copy of this bill. And it was done on the public record. And so you have the right to have access to that. We'll put together that document, give it to all of you. You will all send it out at the same time. And we will get what we're looking for. Then all of you who have appeals, you're going to have to be patient with me because we're working on a new program. Now, I did have one person who tried to order the new program, but that person tried to do it with their debit card, and they tried to do it, pay attention, seven times over the span of two days. So I had to block that person because we don't know what's going on, but they are clogging up our system. And every time that goes wrong, we incur a cost, so can't allow that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we will do videos updating you guys about the new programs and the new stat packs and how their value is. And we'll continue to update you guys on the previous stat pack. Those who had Q packs, I need you all to understand that many of the features that were added to the current stat packs are already included in your agreement. However, we will be adding, and I do need for all of you to pay attention, certain features to your current set pack. Those of you who have the, the new Omega pack, because that's what's been, everybody's been ordering the Omega pack. Um, you guys must understand the contract for the Omega and the Prime and the Plus pack are literally the same. The only thing that's different is the amount of tax credits associated with the Omega. And that's why the price difference. That's the only major difference between the three different packages is the bond amount. And as we stated, you can't change that amount. The moment you change that amount, your documents don't get done. So if you want to change it, then this is not the program for you. Go start your own program, do it your way, and then guess about which agency to send it to because we're not giving that information out, nor will you receive any documentation or paperwork from the agencies that we're going to be sending it to. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to, I didn't expect this video to be 37 minutes or well now 38 minutes, but it was necessary to get this information out to you. You'll be hearing from me less frequently as we continue to bring videos to the SATCOM programs, individual prior members and new members. We'll be trying to give them as much information as we can, and I'm going to start focusing on helping people with certain documentation that they need to file. Thank you all once again for taking the time, and thank you all for your interest in SACCOM as an organization. As we said, this video is being done for SACCOM members, SACPAC members. This video is being done for your benefit. It's just being placed on the EON channel as a way of helping to get the attention of all the sat packers have a good day everyone goodbye